Hello, this is Dr. Tall Paul Simon, psychiatrist. Um, please subscribe to this channel and like the video so I can get more of these on the airways. Um, this video, I just wanted to share a little bit about my thoughts and reflections from today as a psychiatrist. Um, I am a psychiatrist, fully licensed. Um, it's a specialty of medicine. Went to medical school in Kirksville, Missouri and did my residency at Washington University in St. Louis. So I've been practicing as a psychiatrist for about 14 years or so um, in private practice. So I see a large variety of people and all their problems and, and try to help them out as best I can. It's a struggle uh, day to day. People ask me how I can do it, um, how I can listen to people's problems and and just uh, deal with all that stuff. And it's, it's a challenge day to day, it really is. Um, but I think just like with any difficult field, people learn to um, deal with the situation that's presented to them. Uh, people can adapt to all kinds of different situations. Um, I don't know how people can work on a, a fishing boat or an oil rig or um, you know, as a police officer and dealing with all that kind of stuff all the time, the front lines of, of a lot of mental health stuff. So I don't know. Uh, I mean, I have a, a cushy office and supportive staff and a good salary and air conditioning and heat and stuff. I mean, this isn't that bad, okay, compared to a lot of uh, people's work situations. You know, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I, this is a cush job, okay? Um, that said, I do deal with a lot of uh, intense emotional situations um, that can be, um, you know, burdensome, you know, if you let it get to you. I think as a psychiatrist, you know, you have to um, have a certain attitude of distance uh, with people to not only be effective, but to protect yourself. Um, and that same thing goes on with like therapists and nurses and, and other types of doctors and stuff like that. You want to have a professional uh, emotional distance from your patients um, so that you're not uh, too caught up in it and lose yourself. Um, and I think that's partly dependent on your own temperament, um, just how you operate and relate to people. You know, I care about people, but, you know, there's not a whole lot of situations that really make me lose sleep. Um, honestly, and as callous as that sounds, uh, to some extent, um, that's a necessary attitude, I think, uh, to be effective and not burn out in this job. Things that um, get to me sometimes is sometimes are when I want to help somebody, and clearly there are some changes that the person needs to make in their life that they don't seem to be making, at least not that I can see. Um, for example, you know, being in an abusive relationship or a manipulative relationship with somebody and they're not leaving that or setting boundaries on their relationship and they continue to suffer and are miserable and I'm always wanting to help them and, and fix the situation. You know, I was trained as a, as a healer, as a physician, and just like anybody else, we wanna fix things and help people. I think most people do um, have that attitude. But when there's somebody who asks me for help and they're not willing to make those difficult choices, it's, um, it's frustrating. But again, I'm not in their shoes. You know, and I have to remind myself of that, that um, it's easier said than done. It's obvious for us, for me, outside of somebody's situation to really know what they should do. But I, it's, you know, talk is cheap and it's, it's um, easier said than done. You know, a lot of times people have um, woven a web uh, for decades, you know, since childhood. Maybe their parents wove that web for them and, and they're trapped, you know, in their 
in their own head as far as they, they end up not even believing that it's possible to change. And uh, that's sad to see. That Those are the situations that are toughest for me to deal with. You know? um, people with severe symptoms, you know, severe symptoms, I'm talking about treatment resistant, um, panic attacks and, and suicidality and stuff. And, you know, sometimes I, I worry about people and, you know, how stable they really are. Because sometimes they, they may say they're stable, but you don't really believe them. Uh, and you don't have quite uh, anything to hang your hat on with that. Uh, but you know that the person's needing some extra help. And, and those, those situations can be kind of tough to deal with sometimes. Um, sometimes you don't know what to do for somebody and you just got to be, be there for them. Um, so just kind of trusting that process can be very difficult, especially when medications have failed time and time again, you know. Um, so that can be a challenge, but you know, I, I do wish that people would take their medications and if they don't want to take their medications or they're having problems with them, you know, communicate with me or, or another physician to help fix that situation. Um, it's, it really uh, gets my goat when, let's say I'm working with somebody trying to adjust a medication and they're struggling, and then I don't see them for nine months, you know. Um, maybe they forgot to make an appointment or um, they just let it slide or they missed their last appointment and they didn't call and, uh, you know, the ball gets dropped and, um, you know, then I'm finding out eight months later or a year later or something that they were in the hospital and, you know, they had all their medicines screwed up and, you know, it's, they ran out of medications at some point and, um, you know, I'm seeing them for my little 15 minute appointment and uh, trying to catch up and um, that's, that's quite a lot to, to deal with um, in a short amount of time. So that, that kind of uh, is frustrating sometimes, but uh, um, so communication and, and, and wanting regular visits um, to maintain or improve, you know, somebody's stability. I mean, that's, that's very, very important and frustrating to me when it doesn't happen. But again, you know, life happens, people lose insurance and, um, you know, people move and have health issues and stuff like that. So I think that's, that's a challenge that, that I face uh, personally in my career where, okay, I got to make sure I'm not frustrated with the person, <laughs> you know, because they didn't show up, you know, or didn't follow up. Um, instead, just being frustrated with the, the situation and, um, you know, being flexible and charitable in my own heart uh, in that way can be challenging sometimes, you know, because I'm only human. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, this, this video is kind of more a personal blog than some of my other videos, all of my other videos, really. So I'm just kind of exploring, um, you know, this kind of venue and seeing if uh, people um, find it valuable to kind of see what's inside the head of a, a psychiatrist uh, after a long day of seeing uh, patients and trying to heal people. So let me know if uh, you think this, this format is... Uh, is um, helpful or interesting. Uh, if not, I'll stop doing it because it's, it's, you know, uh, not directly utilitarian and uh, for people, at least as far as I can tell. So let me know. Um, I'll do a few more of these videos and, and see how it goes and um, we'll go from there. All right. So what's inside your psychiatrist's head? <laughs>